Today we're going to look at a web browser that doesn't claim to be the smallest thing out there and doesn't claim to be the fastest thing out there either. But what it does claim is to offer a distraction-free browsing experience. Now you might be wondering what this actually means. Basically it means it's going to have a very simple looking interface and it's going to do things like block images, block trackers, and the other thing is it has this really cool reader mode. Now a lot of this stuff you can do with other browsers like Brave, like Firefox, things like that. The problem with those browsers is they still have that very... I guess distracting looking interface, which is probably fine, but if you want something to just do things like read articles, read your emails, things like that, maybe using something like Min might be a good idea. Now the other thing you might be saying is, well, can't I just use a text-based browser? There's a big problem with that, and I don't like that this is a problem, but single page apps are here and they are here to stay. I don't like that we're doing everything in JavaScript on the web now, but that's kind of the direction that everything is going. So you're kind of going to have to learn to deal with it. And using something like this to do a distraction-free browsing experience might be a better option than trying to force yourself into a text-based browser and running into tons of websites that just don't work. The first thing you might notice is, if we go right down to the bottom, it is an Electron app. So if you don't like Electron apps, then you're probably not going to like this. It's pretty light for being an Electron app though, because it's basically just a web frame with a couple extra add-ons onto it. So let's just actually have a look at the browser itself. I've already got a window open here, so if we go into the settings menu, you'll note, that's the wrong key, go into the settings menu, you'll notice you can do a couple of things in here, like block third-party ads and trackers. This is the default setting. If you want to whitelist some websites, you can go ahead and do that. You can allow all trackers if you want to, or you can block all ads and trackers, so not just third-party ads and trackers. You can also block scripts and block images. None of this stuff is new to this actual web browser. This can be done in pretty much everything out there. It also has a built-in dark mode, and you can enable things like site themes. You can also disable the back button. For whatever reason, there's no forward button. I don't know why they didn't bother to put that in there. That is just a weird choice, though. And one of the other cool things which I haven't managed to get working is it has this thing called user script. So that'll let you basically do plugins. I haven't got it to work though, so I can't really show you what that's going to do. But, but there's a couple of plugins like a Vim mode and some other neat little things like that. Nothing too crazy, but it does have a way to do that if you do want to look into it. You can easily set the search engine as well with this right here. By default, it's set to DuckDuckGo, but if you want to use something else, then it's easy to customize. You can also set it to something custom if you want to. I like leaving it on DuckDuckGo though. Now one of the cool things is that because it doesn't have a big plugin framework, you still probably want to use your password manager and it does have a way to integrate Bitwarden and 1Password. Sadly there's not things like pass. That would be nice to see as well, especially for the Linux users, but I guess you can work around it by using something like Bitwarden or 1Password. I personally use LastPass. You can say what you want about LastPass. I probably should migrate to something else like Bitwarden. I just haven't done that just yet. And the last thing in the settings menu is the keyboard shortcuts. Pretty much everything is configurable. There's a couple of things like bringing up inspect element that aren't configurable. I'm not really sure why they're not. It seems like a weird choice to leave those out. Maybe that's something that's directly built into Electron though and there's not a way to customize it. I'm not too sure what the deal is with that. So let's just have a look at how this browser actually works. So I'll just open up a new tab, and let's say we just wanted to look at an article like, I don't know, something I've already got in here. Let's look at this one right here. So 20 must-have apps for Ubuntu. Now, as you can see, it's opened it up in a special reader mode. So we can go back to the actual article, and you can see what it looks like like this. This is a pretty distracting-looking website. You have a bunch of popular articles on the side. The layout is distracting. You've got all these buttons here. It's just not a nice website to read. So if you switch it over to the reader mode though, as you can see, it's gotten rid of all of those distractions. We've still got the nav bar up here, and then the rest of the stuff in here is just the article. So we can scroll all the way down, and you can see all of the, basically all the stuff that's going on with this article. Nothing too special, it's a, oh my god, Ubuntu article, so say what you want about that website. And it's even gotten rid of the comment section, so we can't see that anymore either. If you did want to interact with the comment section for whatever reason, you'd have to actually go back to the main view. And this is one of the cool things that this web browser does. So, even though it's not the quickest thing or the smallest thing out there, this reader mode, I would say, is a really killer feature. I do have a slight issue with the reader mode, though, and that is that it seems to be a little bit inconsistent. So, 
what I mean by this is originally I tried DuckDuckGo and I could set it into reader mode, which doesn't really make sense. It's not actually an article. And then I tried it again and I couldn't. Then I also tried Reddit, so it doesn't really matter what the article was. I tried a Reddit post, I couldn't read it, then I went back to it and I could read it that time. No updates happened, I don't know what happened with the browser, it just suddenly started working the way it should be. I don't know if that was just a problem with that load of the application or what exactly happened there, but let's just try it out now and see what happens. So if we just go to DuckDuckGo, and it doesn't really matter what we search for, let's just search for YouTube. Okay, so I can't activate reader mode right now. That seems to be how it should be working. And let's try Reddit then. So if we go over to Reddit, it doesn't really matter what we pick. Let's just pick the first article on here. And this time I actually can set it to reader mode, which honestly is a much better way to look at Reddit. I don't have to look at all of the garbage. Does it hide the comment section? Yes, it does. That's lovely. Okay, this is just how I'm gonna look at Reddit from now on if I don't wanna look at it in a text-based browser because Reddit actually does work really well for that, surprisingly so actually. So that's actually working the way it should be now. I don't know what happened before. I, I don't know, if someone knows anything about that, then let me know. The other thing is, I'm not really sure how it determines that a website is actually readable. I'm guessing there must be something in the header for the website that says, okay, this is an article, because otherwise I'm not really sure how it works it out, because even on really, really unpopular news websites, it still says, okay, this is an article. I don't know how it's working it out. I guess there must be something in the header. It's been a very long time since I've done HTML. Someone who's a bit more fluent in it or a bit more fluent in modern web design will probably know exactly why it's working, but I'm not too sure on it myself. One neat thing you might've noticed is that as I go between the different tabs, it actually changes the color of the header. I'm not sure where it's actually getting this color from. I don't know if it's specifically being hard-coded for these websites, or if it's somehow sourcing it from the actual web page itself. If it's sourcing it from the web page itself, I don't actually know how it's doing that. Because if we go to something like my anime list, I'm gonna presume that it's probably not set up specifically to work with this website, or if we go to Reddit, just the homepage of Reddit, this is just gray as we see. I would have presumed it would be something closer to the logo for Reddit, so I don't actually know where it's getting this color from. It's a different color than that color we saw before. Let's go over to, I don't know, another, let's go over to Google, see what it does for Google. So Google is blue. If, yeah, this is another one where I'm not really sure where it's actually getting this color from. I could probably just look at the source code and work it out, but if someone specifically knows if there's something in the header about it, that could be what it's doing. I, I don't know about this. One other cool thing this web browser does is it has I guess they'd be called tab groups. What they're calling them here is tasks. So if we have a look at here, as you can see, we're on task one. If we wanna make a new task, we can do that with this button down here, or there's a binding for it. I've got the binding set to control A. So as you can see, I made a new task there, and now it's automatically put us into the task. So we can go and say, I don't know, let's look up something like, I don't know, this, let's just bring up this article right here. So what we can do now is actually cycle between them. I've got it set up to work with Vim keys to jump between them. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. Okay, for some reason it highlighted the entire page. That's odd. But I've got it set up so if I go Control J and Control K, that'll actually go between the two different tasks. And then if I want to go between the tabs, I can do it with Control H and Control L. Obviously not the default mappings. I think by default it's set up to work with the arrow keys. I don't like the arrow keys. I'd much rather do it with the Vim keys. So what you can do here is say, okay, I want to keep those tabs open, but I want to go and do something separate here. And basically this is sort of like opening up a new window, but it's just all kept within the same block. So instead of having to manage a bunch of different windows, what you can do instead is just say, okay, I have this tab group and I have this other tab group. I'm just going to keep that tab group here and I'm going to be working on this one right here now. It's a nice little feature and I think it could be really improved with the next feature I'm going to show you. So let's just open up another tab and let's, I don't know, just open up DuckDuckGo. Now, what I'm gonna show you is a thing called focus mode. Focus mode is basically a thing where it's gonna hide all of your other tabs and gonna say, okay, you are now on this tab, that is all you're looking at. So if you wanna do something like open up another tab, it's gonna say, okay, you're in focus mode. If you wanna open up another tab, you have to leave focus mode. So this is basically for the sort of people who get very distracted when they're trying to do something that 
they're actually supposed to be doing. I am someone who very much has this problem. I'll be trying to, I don't know, work on a research paper, try to read an article, and then I will see a shiny color in another direction, and I'll go chase the shiny color. That's kind of my problem. So, say you wanted to read an article on, I don't know, let's just look up Linux news, pick the first thing we see. Linux today. Let's say you're supposed to be really focusing on reading these articles, but you're like, okay, well, I want to go look at something different. Well, you can't do that because you're in focus mode, and because you're in focus mode, you have to actually do your job. Now, if you want to leave focus mode, you actually have to go into the view menu and click the focus mode button. I think it's actually a very good idea to not have this on a key binding, because if it's on a key binding, it's going to kind of defeat the entire purpose of it. Because if you can just disable focus mode by just pressing a key, it doesn't really force you to look at one thing, because it's so easy to disable. When you're actually forced to go into a menu and say, okay, I'm actually disabling it now, it adds a bit of an extra step that might dissuade you from actually getting distracted. Now the improvement I would like to see is make it so you can do a focus mode on a tab group instead of just being forced to look at a single tab because maybe you actually have important stuff open over here and you have important stuff open over here. Yes, it makes sense to have a focus mode on a single tab but I think that making it so it could also work on a tab group might actually be a nice improvement. Obviously still make it so you can't switch tasks because that would completely defeat the purpose of it. If you could look at everything, that's not really a distraction free mode. But making it so you're limited to just a group, I don't think would defeat the purpose of it. I think it would actually improve the usability of it. Another thing we have access to here is a command mode. So there's a couple of ways we can get in here. You can just go up to the search bar and then type in a exclamation mark or you can just press control E and that'll put the exclamation mark there for you. In here you can do things like bang searches that DuckDuckGo has, like you want to search Wikipedia, you want to search IMDB. Let's say we want to search Amazon. So we could search Amazon and search for, I don't know, uh, webcam. And that will bring up Amazon, do a search on webcams. Works as you'd expect. If you ever used DuckDuckGo bang searches, there's nothing too different from that. I think that actually is a DuckDuckGo bang search. But there are some extra things you can use alongside of this. So if you did something like say start typing in back, there's actually commands that are built into this application. So back will take you back a step, works as you'd expect. You can also do that with your like arrow keys. I'd recommend just learning the key bindings for it because it'll be a bit easier than having to navigate up here. And if we go show more, you can see a bunch of other stuff in here. So there's things like a reading list, bookmark, setting, go back, go forward and take a screenshot. There is a full list of the commands that are available on the GitHub page, so feel free to check that out if you want to see a full list of those. But I didn't realize there was a take a screenshot one. Does this one just take a full screen screenshot? Seems like it does, and I don't know where it saves that. Let's see if I can find that. So my quest to find the screenshot wasn't too successful. I didn't actually manage to find it. So I'm gonna presume that it worked, but I don't know where they got saved to. The documentation for Min also didn't seem too helpful in that regard either. Now the reason I brought up command mode wasn't to show you that though. The reason I brought it up though was to show you the reading list. Now the reading list actually is really cool. So if we look in here, this is all of the articles that I've read. Now as you can see up the top here, it shows a DuckDuckGo search. This was the page that I brought open that I could set DuckDuckGo to a reading mode. Now as we look in here, it's still in reader mode. But if I quit out of it, I can't get back into it. So I don't know what the actual cause of that was. I presume that if I set DuckDuckGo to always open up in reader mode from that actual page, it would just always open up in reader mode. Let's see what actually happens if we do that. So always open articles from this site in reader mode. Okay. And if we just go to DuckDuckGo now, uh, YouTube, is that going to do it? No, that didn't do it. Okay. Huh. That's bizarre. I don't know why this page specifically will open up in reader mode. And clearly this is a debug mode because this shouldn't be getting shown to me. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. That's a little weird. Generally you can't get into reader mode on DuckDuckGo though. So I just had some weird bug that happened I guess that enabled I guess a debug mode. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, ignoring that little bug, the reading list is actually really cool. Because let's say you were reading an article and you started reading it and then you want to go back and finish it. Obviously you could go and dig back through your history, 
But wouldn't it be easier to have a much shortened down list of just the articles you've read? Or say you were doing something like making a video like this and you wanted to go back and find some references for the things you're saying. Having a shortened down list to search through might be a bit of an easier way to do it than having to dig through all of your history. Now obviously you could maintain your own list outside of the application and that's what I would recommend doing if you wanted to do something like that. But having it built into the application is a nice little thing to see as well. And like every other browser out there, we also have access to a bookmarks list. Now, if you know me, you probably know that I never actually use bookmarks within my web browser. That's not to say I don't bookmark stuff. I just have them external to my web browser. So I can do things like, say, migrate from Brave to Firefox and not need to move a single bookmark. All I need to do is change my browser variable and it just worked perfectly fine. If I wanted to migrate permanently to Min, I could do the exact same thing and there would be no trouble whatsoever there. But if you are someone who does like to have their bookmarks actually in their web browser, then you can import a bookmarks HTML file. I presume this is in the format that things like Firefox and Chrome use. I know there is some issues actually migrating bookmarks from Firefox to Chrome and obviously from Chrome to Firefox. I don't know what the experience is like here. So you may lose some bookmarks. I don't know if this supports bookmark folders. If it doesn't, that could be a problem. If it does, it could be less of a problem. Once again though, I don't know how well it works because I haven't tested it. And also like every other web browser under the sun, we also have access to private tabs. Now, I don't typically use private tabs, but they are here for you to use if you do want to use them. So I'm probably not going to use this as my main web browser. I really like Brave. I'm probably going to stick with Brave for the foreseeable future. But there is one use case where I do see this actually being useful. So let's go actually have a look at that. Now, if we go over to my third desktop, as you can see, this is my configuration for Newsboat. So in here, I've basically just set my browser to be min. Now, the reason that I've done this is because if I'm in Newsboat, pretty much all I use Newsboat for is reading subreddits and also reading a bit of Hacker News. So if I'm looking at this, like let's say I wanted to go to the Arch Linux sub and look at this here. And for whatever reason, let's say I wanted to open it up in my web browser. Now, in here, okay, it's actually stopped working now. As you can see, I can't go into reader mode on Reddit anymore, but it was working before. That's interesting. So maybe it doesn't work when I open it up from Newsboat for whatever reason. That's interesting. I don't know what the cause of that is. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the URL. So something odd is actually happening there anyway. When I'm using Newsboat, I generally just want to have a bit of a read of the article. Normally, I won't do stuff like this, but if it's, say, Hacker News, a lot of Hacker News links, they will actually just be links directly to an article, which you can't really read too well just from being in Newsboat. So let's go to this website right here, and as we will see, this will open up a new tab in a second, and here is this blog post. We can open this one up in reader mode, though. Interesting. Okay, whatever. For whatever reason, that Reddit post didn't work. I don't know what's going on with that. But this page here seems to work perfectly fine for going into reader mode. This is kind of the only use case I see for Min. I don't really see a use case for it as a general web browser. But as something being there just to read the news, I see a really good use for it. You may not. But for me, I read a lot of news articles and I read a lot of Reddit posts. And just having a... I guess more distraction free way to do it is a bit of an improvement for me. You might not see any use for it whatsoever, but for me, I think there is some value there. So I'm probably gonna keep using this web browser as a newsboat thing, unless I find something that's a little bit better. There are some things I do wanna check out. This is kind of just the first web browser in the stream of web browser videos you're gonna get over the next couple of weeks. I'm probably gonna do one a week, like I'm doing one Vim video a week. Seems like a fun way to handle it. So. Before I go though, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andre, P.E., Road, Tony Donald, Oculari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea on Library and YouTube for the video version, and wherever you listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.